All right, everybody, how you doing? We are live, and um, it's uh, four o'clock local time. We stopped at 3.30 local time. Jennifer, do you realize this is the first? We have kept the 3.30 rule. Well, this is great, <laughs> please. Yeah, this has been the first time. We are uh, coming to you, let's see if I can adjust that camera a little bit. We are coming to you from the Wisconsin Dells in uh, central Wisconsin and uh, it's been a beautiful day. This is day one of our um, of our trip west, eventually heading up to the Canadian Rockies and Glacier National Park and uh, we can see everybody starting to join us now. We'll just make sure that the audio sounds okay and the video sounds okay. I'll maybe move the microphone. There might be a little bit of wind noise there because, uh, hey, we're uh -oh. <laughs> Whoop. That'll, that'll do it, won't it? Uh, I get my Osmo device. There oh we go. Everybody's gonna get seasick. Yeah, everybody's gonna get seasick here. Let's get this adjusted correctly. Well, there. That was pretty funny. There we go. That was very funny. I wonder if you could do that again. <laughs> I probably could do it again. Yeah, the, the, the afternoon is is uh, is young. Uh, you know, one of the things that we should point out in uh, when we do Facebook Live, everybody says, "How come that's backwards when you see it?" So let me just answer that. Uh, because we're using the front facing camera to record us on Facebook and we need it that way so we can read your comments and questions below. Uh, for some reason Facebook makes everything reversed. It doesn't happen on YouTube, but it's 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 weird. So this says native by the way. And that's uh, the map of Michigan where we live. And that's the upper peninsula, lower peninsula, yep. upper peninsula. Lower cool upper. shirt, yeah. cool shirt. There you go, cool shirt. So, anyway, from the Wisconsin Dells in Wisconsin, uh, hi Paul, how are you doing? Uh, what did he say? Say we, oui, okay, whatever that means, we'll agree with you there. So, um, we started actually uh, yesterday, we left for this trip yesterday, and uh, the um, goal of, of this adventure that we're doing this time is for us to keep our own rule, which is the 330 rule. You want to explain that one? 330 means you drive 330 miles or, or you stop at 330 to enjoy wherever you are, settle in. So stop by 330 uh, local time or don't go any more than 330, whichever comes quick. I have been uh, arguing about that and urging people to do that for how long? Five years. Five years and the truth of the matter is, is confession time is uh, we've never kept the rule. Maybe 3.30 a.m. Yeah, 3.30 a.m. we've done. But we kept it today. We did. Good boy. I was a good boy. You think I'll do it tomorrow? Yes. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I think we will tomorrow too. So uh, we are taking um, the northern route up to the glaciers, which is uh, uh, up along I-94, and we'll try that. What time did you start off? What time? Well, we started off, gosh, I don't know, about 9 o'clock local time. We're on central time now. Uh, we actually started this thing just um, just west of Chicago. We had some errands to run yesterday. We dropped Bo off with our son in Kalamazoo, Michigan, which is across the state from us. And then we uh, wanted to get ahead of ourselves a bit, and so we got into got through Chicago before rush hour. So we really began this morning. We stayed in a Walmart last after night. rush hour. After rush hour, yeah. We stayed in a Walmart last night near uh, where were we? Rockford, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous uh, little. Uh, it was the best Walmart I have seen yet. Uh, yeah, uh, Rebecca likes the t-shirt. Thank you, Rebecca. It's it is one of my favorites. I got I got a whole bunch of Michigan shirts that I wear all the time. So, uh, all right. So anyway, the three thirty rule. This and that's the theme of this this uh, live report is how not to burn yourself out on a RV trip. Trust us, we have done that. We usually do that. We usually do that. In fact, yesterday we dropped Bo off and we've got 60 plus miles down the road and we forgot something at our son's house. So we turned around and went back. So we got an extra 120 miles. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something else. Uh, let's see, tired of your neighbors started up Walmart, really. Actually, we had one of the nicest spots we have stayed at anywhere in this Walmart last night. There was no one around us. We were in, it was dark, it was quiet. It's quieter than this campground we're in in Wisconsin Dells, as a matter of fact. It was, I was surprised. I said to Mike, I'd like you to take a picture of it because there are evergreens behind us and Beautiful. a mound of grass and nobody would guess yeah, and that it we was, were in a parking lot. And it was dark, so it, that was great. 
Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people like to stay in Walmarts because why would you want to spend 50, 60 bucks staying in a campground? Unless you can find woods or a place to boondock, which you cannot find all the time. So that's. You can't uh, even find a rest area. We, yeah. This trip. Uh, so, yeah, last night was, it was a terrible drive. I mean, um, I swear all of downtown Chicago, all the major roads in Chicago, all of them are under construction. Or and should we say destruction? And our GPS would tell us to exit, and the exit was closed, or it would tell us to yeah, exit. Yeah, so the exit, you go off the road, was blocked. It yeah. had been for a long time. Or it was a neighborhood that you would not pull off into. You remember that Chevy Chase vacation movie where he pulled off in some big city, <laughs> ended up in the inner city, and everybody graffitied his car? Well, that was the kind of neighborhoods that we would have been it pulled off in rough. Chicago. It so. looked where you would not want to pull off. So that was uh, it was real. But our, but our goal is not to get burned out and drive maximum distance. This whole trip to Glacier and the Canadian Rockies is a, is a little under 2,000 miles from our, best, our home in Michigan. And our idea is to, um, is to make it more fun. So today, we left at 9. We stopped at and took care of Jennifer's addiction. Uh, anytime fitness. I got Mike to work out for half an hour. So that was good, and then we showered because we had stayed at the Walmart. We wanted to shower, so anytime fitness. We, now we could have showered in the rig, but if you're going to work out anyway, why not use that really nice bathroom that they give you at any time fitness? So we did that, and then we started down the road, and then we found um, a little place called Beloit, Wisconsin. Just a dot on the map. It's a, it's a nice little small town on, uh, on the river, and we saw a sign on the road. This is how we often find the serendipity places to visit that we're always writing about. We were driving and we saw a sign. You saw a sign for Angel. I'm driving to the Angel Museum. So I looked, Jennifer looked at me, I looked at her, she whipped out her, Computer. her cell phone, or her, yeah, her laptop. And looked up. Looked up, dug, uh, you know, looked up the Angel Museum, found that this is the largest Angel Museum in the country. There may be a larger one in, uh, uh, somewhere in uh, uh, Japan, of all places. But this is the largest in the U.S. And, it, and we spent an hour there, had lunch in this little town. Did it, we did an off-the-beaten-path report, which we'll, you'll see in a, on our YouTube channel in a, in a little while. And what made that visit nice was Sally, a volunteer there who explained a few of the things and how the museum got started, the history of the man and woman who donated all these angels. But, and just she added to the richness of the experience. And it was, it was just really a, a sweet little place. And if you are on uh, US 90... Uh, I-90, uh, and you are, um, and you, give, you come up to Beloit, Wisconsin, give yourself an hour's time and go visit the Angel Museum. It's it's like no other museum you've ever been. All these little statues. I feel like little angels. And collectibles. Even I was interested in that. Well, she made it interesting. Yeah, Sally was, was great, the, our tour guide. Get a tour guide. We'll tell you more about that in a, in a video. We had lunch there, leisurely lunch, no burnout there. Jumped on the road. And to had, construction and bad uh, roads. Yeah, oh my gosh. Uh, massive construction again bumper throughout, bumper throughout all of Illinois. Illinois is just a mess this year. And what we did is we, uh, our trick when we, we got up there is uh, we hope the GPS is going to pull us together. But it, uh, it didn't. Let's see, last year I drove through the night to avoid Chicago traffic, kept on going after breakfast in Racine, made it from Ontario to Mount Rushmore in one day. Oh, good. Sounds like our time to travel. <laughs> We're not doing it this time there, Gary Martin. We're doing it 3.30 as easy as we can, unless we feel something else comes up. The lights of Chicago really were pretty last night, but, but the, you couldn't look because you were too busy just yeah, focusing was, on the road. Everything was under construction. It was, or destruction, everything was, and it was it was just a mess. So we had fun, but we wanted to get out of there and then spend the night, and, and then we found even I-90, there was about an eight minute, or uh, eight mile long backup. And so what we do then is we just get off uh, and try and find parallel roads. And so we found some that went on the east side of 90 north for a couple miles then it dead ended and then we went across 90 and found went down we found one that was on the east side or the west side and we took that up a few miles and we finally got around there. oh stop it you're going to make them all want to go get in their cars and drive but yeah normally we do what gary did up there we just drive all the way through or we drive 800 miles in a day and then we wonder why we can't enjoy the place we're at because we're so tired uh, so here we are um i don't know if they can see behind us uh, back over there it's you're kind of covering it up Let's see if I can pull it. Uh, we have brought our um, our sky. What do we call that chair? Look at the sky. That's look at the Jennifer's. Stars. Look, look at, the, at sky. the sky. Look at the stars chair. That gravity chair. Uh, and that's uh, that's the first thing we brought out. Here comes a big old class A. Yeah. 
Now here's here's what I do. You know, look at this. Now that's nice. See that's that? His home. That's somebody pulling in with a huge Class A, towing a car behind him. Yeah. And in yeah. our case, um, in our case, let's see. All we we've got everything with us right in our unit. And uh, there's our unit uh, parked behind us here. Um, temperature's about 80 degrees. This is the first time that I can ever remember stopping um, pretty much before dinner time. Before dark? Before dark, yeah. This has been just a, a great uh, great trip. So we're going to do that. Do you ever spend more than one night at a place besides family? Um, <laughs> one night will be enough here. One night will be enough here. We're at a KOA. It's a nice KOA. If you had kids, little kids, it'd be great. We're right by the swimming pool. You know, lots of things for now, kids we have, to do, which yeah, is Yeah, we good. don't have any kids with, and with us on this trip or grandkids. Um, and, and I stay here basically because I thought the Wisconsin Dells, we've never been there. We've heard a lot about it. We thought it was a really nifty uh, area of wilderness. Well, there's not, there's not much wilderness. There's a river here with some gorges and some, some cliffs, kind of like the pictured rocks, only shorter, that, that they have up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. But most of the Wisconsin Dells are water parks. Huge, huge. Kids would love it. Kids would love it. Grandkids would love it. Huge water parks. And uh, I mean, that's just, I mean, water park after water park. I can't believe how big they are. But um, we've never seen it. So now we're here and we got to go see it. Yeah, that's that's it. Uh, Joe Crocker, or Joe, I can't read your last name. Uh, Croteau, Croteau says, do you ever enjoy watching people set up, laugh out loud? Yes, we do. It's so fun to watch these big guys come in. And they back up, and the, the, the wife or the husband is out there is giving directions. Beeping? Is that your camera beeping? Does that mean it's going to go off? Yeah, or something's going to beep. Hey, we're not going to be able to talk too loud. It's getting quick. How do you get around in town after you've settled into the RV park? We just shut that back door, that door, and we drive off. Hey, we're going to lose, I think, our connection here because uh, I think the battery is dying, and I can hear this thing beeping, as you probably can too. Uh, so, I, uh, hey, Brian Barker, you joined just in time to watch us say goodbye. But anyway, the 330 world. Whoops. <laughs> Wait a minute, I know it was beeping. Okay, hang on a minute. It's gonna get jerky for a minute. It was it wasn't it's not no, the battery. It's, it's the battery on this thing. This is overheating. There we go. That's that's gonna be a little better. Uh, well maybe no, not. No, maybe not. We'll just try it like that. Um, so we can keep going for a second. Uh, yeah, the the battery I have um, a DJI Osmo is what normally keeps this thing steady. It's a steady cam on a gimbal, and the battery was wearing out on that. I thought it was charged. Uh, actually, it felt like it was overheating a little bit. So, uh, this will be a little bit uh, jerkier because I'm holding it to try and keep it steady, but we can keep going for a little bit. On an unstable table. On an unstable table, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's see. Hi to Rio Grande Valley RV Parks. Glad to have you with us. Hi to Tracy Stevens and many others that are watching us live. I want to give a shout out to our YouTube channel. We have really been working hard on that and I've told you a bunch of it, but if you go to YouTube, search for uh, Mike and Jennifer's RV Lifestyle, RV Lifestyle channel. That's the name of it, the RV Lifestyle channel. We've got uh, new videos. We put one up um, yesterday. Uh, we've got a new one coming up. Uh, yesterday was on the windshield witness why everybody needs a dash cam. Tomorrow is uh, a video we just finished on things to do before you leave the driveway. And uh, you can watch Jennifer play flight attendant in that one as we go. I think we give you nine things that um, you may not think about that, you, that we urge that you do before you take off and leave for a trip. So that will be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. And uh, if you have subscribed to that, you'll be able to see all of our videos regularly. We invite you to do that. That's great. All right, Karen. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Lucas Laverne says, I think the hot pockets are done in the microwave. That beeping sound. Yes, Lucas. <laughs> I wish it was. I am kind of hungry. Uh, Karen says, do you have a shower in the road trek or do you rely on public facilities? Yes, we do have a shower in there. It's small. We've showed it before. If you want to go to that YouTube channel I just mentioned, the RV Lifestyle channel, you can see we showed this whole unit and the shower uh, in a video that went up last week. Uh, I think it was a reveal, a live reveal of our, when we got this new RV. But it's a small shower, and you know you only have so much fresh water you take. I think it's 30 gallons in this thing. But if you hooked it up or, like a big Class A, you could hook up water. Sure, and you could do it, and you could you you, you could do it here too. You could uh, you could hook up more your water directly. But you know you just kind of wet yourself off, rinse yourself off, uh, slather up, rinse it off again. 
Uh, so we will often go and work out at, a, at a Anytime Fitness. We've joined that. We can find them all over the country, and they have great, clean, private bathrooms. Best secret around that we share. And if we use our shower, because I'm the one who has to clean, the shower liner gets wet, and you have to think about mold, so you got to get it dry. But yeah, I mean, you can do it, but I'm just kind of lazy. Uh, Tim Carter, how often do you boondock? As much as we can. Uh, now, where we are, where we've been now, basically going through urban Chicago, not a lot of places that we wanted to boondock, especially at one o'clock at night when we were going through. Uh, so we picked this place basically so we could be done and have a spot for sure. Uh, tomorrow we're going to stop by and um, hang out around a little bit around Minneapolis, and then uh, then we start making our way through um, northern Minnesota into North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, and um, and we'll boondock as much as we can there. We're going to go we'll... to Mount Rushmore. No, we're not going to go to Mount Rushmore. We're, pout, we're pout, on the northern pout. route. We talked. No. We can go pout, pout. We'll probably do it on the way back, maybe. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see, Paul, uh, Patty, uh, there you are. Nice to see you. Thank you, Patty. Linda, we are heading to Alaska soon. Any advice? Take along a lot of bug spray, Linda. The bugs are horrible this time of year up in Alaska, but you will enjoy it. Uh, it'll be worth the bites. Uh, but yeah, lots of bug spray. You'll, you'll have it. Uh, what are the average juice? What's that? What's the average price of a site? Well, if you're at a KOA, they're expensive. Um, this unit that we're on now is with their discount, if you're a member of their club, it's like 65 bucks, something like that. You can get some for upper 30s, but KOAs are very expensive. You know, they're aimed at families uh, with a real nice campground, a swimming pool. Um, they game sometimes room, have game rooms, activities. stuff like that. So you, you pay, and you know, they have full hookups with everything you want, but um, you know, it's more than what we need, and it's a lot of money, it really is. So uh, that, that's... That's one night. Yeah, we're staying here one night just one night and then we're and I don't know where we'll be tomorrow that's the beauty of our serendipity style of travel we don't we don't know so okay um, I told you that we would uh, we'd stick to the rule we did I can now say I have stuck to my own 330 rule and uh, you might uh, use the comments below to share how you travel um, it's it's real interest it's a temptation for me and I think you too because you have a lot of competitiveness in you you know we got a place we want to be we, let's get there as fast as we can and what we have found over five years is often you are all burned out because you've driven too far. You've missed seeing stuff along the way. So that's what we've been doing on this trip. We had a great time looking at that museum we stumbled across in Beloit. And uh, it was great. Uh, well, thank you, Tim. Uh, safe travels to you. I don't know where you're going. To uh, all the rest of you, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, this is going to be a big travel weekend. A lot of schools are getting out this week and next up in the north and in the Midwest. And then, of course, next weekend is Father's Day, and uh, many, many more people will be out there. Um, hope you have a wonderful time in Minnesota. We live in the Twin Cities. My wife and I are looking to buy our first road trek and looked all last week. Uh, hey, if you're in Minnesota, go over to Steinbring Motorhomes. They're in suburban Minneapolis. We're going to go there tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to stop by there tomorrow afternoon and uh, check them out. They have all the brand new road treks in stock that you want to see. All right, um, hope you guys all enjoyed this. Uh, okay, more advice on traveling to Alaska in the summer. Remember, it's daylight all night and you could find it hard to sleep. That's a good point if you're going to Alaska. Uh, what are those? Blackout things? shades. Blackout shades. The little mask little for your mask. eyes. Yeah, that's it. And you can get the netting with a hat for Mosquito your face. Mosquito netting. We have, I think that I just loaded one in the, R in the RV right now that's mm -hmm. out there. So, so our, oh, um, I haven't shared this. this is, we've now driven... Um, a bunch of hundred miles, uh, several hundred miles in this brand new RV and a lot of people want to know since it's a 4x4 four, four, how we did uh, mileage wise and I have averaged about 15 and a half. Now that's just a little bit less than what we averaged in the non-diesel version of that so uh, that's pretty good uh, 15 and a half um, on uh, non diesel. Four by four? on a non 4x4, four four, yeah, uh, and this 4x4 four four is a little higher up off the ground. I should probably, let's see if I can pull this out because it's going to get, excuse me, the sloppy stuff there, but I want to show you one addition that we did pick up yesterday uh, that Jennifer, I can't get it out of this connection. Of uh, well, let's see here, I can just go, I can just go, see the palm of my hand, yeah. Let me just see if I can show you this. This is, uh, I'll stand up here, this is, uh, this is our rig, and you can see it's it's a little higher than normal. So, Jen, explain that. Normally, stuff 
steps are 8 inches, this is 12 inches, and... This one here is 12 yeah. inches. So this is what we, she bought. I picked up a little 4 inch step so that I've got the 8 in. I didn't like stepping 12 inches. And I asked the woman, should I get metal or should I get plastic? And the plastic is like twice the price. And as soon as we left there and I got down the road and I looked at this, I thought, oh, I should have got the plastic. I should have paid more money and got the plastic one. This is going to plus. This is kind of sharp. It's steel. And, it's steel. And it's heavy. Steel. And I should have spent twice the money and gotten the plastic. But but that's the one. The first thing that we kind of noticed is instead of that eight inch step in, it's a twelve inch step because this is about four inches higher than uh, the uh, the previous rig we had. So so for me, this works. I like the feel of this bed. The twelve inches just felt too high to me. Yep. There you go. All right. Um, I I've been saying we're going to quit for a long time, and we are going to quit right now. That's it. Uh, we are going to uh, eat here. We brought some leftovers, and we've got some food. You prepared some food in advance, your world-famous veg uh, vegetable lasagna. And that should have been one of our, our tenth tip to make sure you get, make sure you shut the freezer door, the refrigerator door, make sure they're latched because we did do one of those where the freezer door flew open and all the food fell out. That was Just yesterday. Just adds to the excitement. About 30 seconds after we pulled onto the main road uh, yeah. to leave in our house. Hey, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. We're going to enjoy what's left of it. We hope you do too. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, stay in touch. Please go over to the YouTube channel. Everybody, do us a favor, subscribe to that so we can stay in touch. There's a big community over there that has built up over this the last couple of months, and we're really enjoying. We're putting a lot more videos, and look tomorrow on the YouTube channel for that video about uh, uh, nine tips to do before you leave your driveway in your been RV. Ten. Should have been ten. <laughs> uh, that's all I could think of, or that's all I had time to do. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye-bye.